Hello there, this is Welsh ASMR 82. Hey, how you doing? So there I was, just scrolling through Fot Mob, the uh, app that I use. They don't pay me or anything, I just really like the app. To see what football's on today, I'm going to be watching Roma later. Uh, and I saw this, the African Football League. Now, I had spotted it a couple of days ago and started to look it up. And I thought, actually, why not do a little video on it? Because it's a tiny bit controversial and I've had a couple of video comments this week saying, oh, we haven't done a controversy video in a while. It's this kind of, kind of, that's the job. So why don't we talk about what on earth is the African Football League in this ASMR video. You can just chill out and relax if you want to, or you can uh, pay attention and <laughs> drop a comment. But either way, I hope you find the video really relaxing. Okay, here we go. Okay, with the power of magic, we're now looking at the Wikipedia site for the African Football League. So I'm aware the rain smashes the window outside here in South Wales. Um, I'm aware of the Champions League in Africa, uh, but I've, I thought, this isn't the Champions League, what is this? So I did a little bit of research and I read some articles, but it's safest to refer to Wikipedia for right, so that I don't upset anyone. And obviously Wikipedia is always 100% correct. <laughs> okay, the African Football League, otherwise known as the AFL, is an annual continental club football competition run by the CAF that kicked off in October 2023. It was announced on the 28th of November 2019 by everyone's favourite idiot Gianni Infantino, president of FIFA. It was initially launched as the Africa Super League <laughs> on the 10th of August 2022 and was to include 24 elite African clubs with a promotion relegation system. Recognise, uh, but is scaled down to eight teams for its inaugural campaign. It will run alongside CAF's other main club competition, the CAF Champions League and the CAF Confederation Cup, and will not be a replacement for it. Okay, so it was founded two years ago in the region of Africa. Currently, there's eight teams from different associations, so only one from each country, basically. Uh, and next year, 23, 24, 24, 25, next year is going to have 24 teams. Okay, the essence of holding this tournament is a huge, um, is the huge financial returns, projected to exceed one hundred million dollars, to be used to develop and improve stadiums, infrastructure, and the promotion of African football worldwide. Okay, so Infantino launched the tournament during a visit to the DR Congo to celebrate the eightieth anniversary of TP Mazembe, their greatest club saying that the top 20 clubs in Africa should be chosen and made to participate in an African league. Infantino said this league would generate revenues of $100 million, making it among the top 10 leagues in the world, and revealed that he was launching an appeal to raise $1 billion in order to give every African country a football stadium that complies with the specifications of FIFA. That's a positive thing. In July 2021, the president of CAF, Patrice Motsepe, confirmed the move to implement the African Super League project as a new tournament ran under the umbrella of CAF with large financial returns for the sides taking part. For the sides taking part. Okay, I'll come back to that. The Confederation of African Football launched the competition on the 10th of August 2022 in Tanzania. Weird, because Tanzania aren't involved at the moment where more information about the competition was released. CAF initially wanted to start the competition in August 23, with reports suggesting that 24 clubs would feature in three groups of eight teams. That's weird. I'll come back to that again. Ahead of a knockout stage starting at the round of 16, these teams would have been taken from the best-ranked African clubs over the past few years, with groups played on a regional basis. North Central and Northwest and Southeast. Well, South and Southeast. South and East. 
As part of the club licensing criteria, participating clubs would be required to have a youth academy and a women's team. A women's team, excuse me. On the 9th of June, the president of CAF, Patrice Monsebe, announced the decision to change the name of the African Super League to the African Football League during an interview with BN Sport, saying, Our friends in Europe advised us not to use the expression Super League due to the negative associations with a recent failed attempt in European football. This does look a lot like that, but supported by, in this case, Infantino and FIFA. Uh, in June 23, during the that year's CAF General Assembly in Abidjan, Infantino announced that the competition would be scaled back to eight teams for the inaugural edition and would now kick off on the 20th of October 2023, which will be followed by an expanded tournament further down the line. The Africa Football League would also not replace the CAF's top football competition, the CAF Champions League. In August 23, the competition format for the inaugural edition was announced, with the previous format announced to be adopted starting 24-25. On the 20th of October 2023, the president of CAF, Motsebe, unveiled the African Football League trophy. Okay, format. The initial details of the format were announced during the launch ceremony in 2022. The competition would have 24 teams, divided into three regionalised groups, um, North, Central and West, and South and East, to make travelling less expensive. For eight teams per group, and there will be a maximum of three teams per country. I don't like that format, I don't really understand why you want to have eight teams in a group. Seems a bit ridiculous, but uh, there we go. That's so many extra games, and it doesn't say whether it's going to be home and away. I think it's supposed to be home and away. So that's like eight, take away two. So that's 14 matches in the group stage. The teams would have been from 16 countries present, representing approximately a billion people. The competition would have 197 matches in total, with a maximum of 21 matches played by the finalists. That's a lot, particularly if those clubs are also not only in their league, their domestic cup, but also in the Champions League. Because this is running alongside it. And a promotion relegation playoff. The final would have been played in a single match, so that sort of certifies the home and away, with the final designed to become the Super Bowl of Africa. The 2023 edition will be contested as an eight-team knockout competition with two-legged quarter-final, semi-final and final rounds. The previously announced format will be used starting with the 2024-25 campaign. Okay, let's talk about money. The prize money for the first season has been announced in September 23 and is as follows. $4 million for the winner, $3 million for the runner-up, 1.7 for each of the semi-finalists and a million for each of the quarter-finalists, which is all of them because everyone started at a quarter-final. So, I'm not good at maths, but that's not a billion, is it? And I think they have struggled to find the funds. The first controversy is that the funds are coming from Saudi Arabia. So Infantino wanted to get people to invest and the Saudi Tourist Board were the first and largest offer. So Saudi Arabia is basically sponsoring this tournament. Uh, media coverage across the world will be on FIFA Plus. And controversies. Here we go. The project has been subjected to criticism for unrealistic expectations of financial returns. The current continental championships in Africa experience weak infrastructure and high travel costs for fans and teams, which will not be automatically resolved by this new competition. There are already significant financial disputes 
between the major teams in North Africa, South Africa, so North Africa is a whole region, South Africa is a country, and the rest of the continent, which would be exacerbated, I can't say this word, exacerbated by the new competition. I'll come back to that in a second. Further, it is also doubtful whether the competition can arouse the public's attention, despite claims to the contrary. While there are concerns about the impact on the new competition, on the current CAF championships, such as the Champions League, which prize money of the winners is at the same level as the African Football League winners, the CAF Confederation Cup and National Leagues. In this regard, the Confederation of African Football has also been described as a laboratory of experiments, with the acceptance of the proposal to establish the African Super League contrasting with the rejection of the European Super League by UEFA in April 2021. Okay, so let's talk about the different issues here. One, what Infantino is, I think, rightly trying to do is to raise the standards um, of African football, injecting money into its infrastructure, which will, in turn, not only keep African players in their leagues in the, on the continent rather than have to go to Europe or Asia, for example, or North America, and will create global interest in the game. Obviously, his end game is to get more money because a successful competition gets advertisers and advertisers pay FIFA money. He is a businessman. He's expanded the World Cup the new World Cup, which is coming in uh, the USA, Mexico, and Canada next time around. He's expanded that because more teams mean more media coverage, more money. More, adver more games, more advertising revenue, more money. He doesn't want the Super League in Europe because it's outside of FIFA, and therefore FIFA will get no money for the largest clubs taking part and they would lose money from the Champions League, which is their, one of their biggest earners, if not their biggest earner, maybe, alongside the FIFA World Cup, Men's World Cup. He's also expanded the Club World Cup from like eight, eight teams to now it's going to be 24 every four years. So again, looking for extra revenue, constantly looking for more money, more money, more money. So his reasonings for doing it are money-based and therefore bad, but actually it would be a good situation if African leagues were competitive, could re retain stars rather than losing them to Europe, had lots of people not only domestically but internationally watching their matches, you know, particularly for Europeans where many of the African countries are actually on the same time zone. So it would be quite easy to turn over and watch African match um, and, you know, for example, some of the Egyptian leagues in particular, the crowds are absolutely amazing and it's a really good standard of football. But if you wanted to watch the Egyptian um, Premier League at the minute, it would be very, very difficult to do so. So his reasonings are kind of corrupt, but the outcome is the same. It's going to be a positive thing. It's ironic that they blocked it in Europe but they've encouraged it in Africa, and as I've already explained why in Europe they wouldn't make any money off it, because it's not their idea. Their money comes from the Champions League and they couldn't afford to lose teams like Barcelona, Real Madrid, um, etc. The other contro controversy is that I read somewhere that they were thinking about spreading the money over the in the Federation itself, but this seems to contradict that and suggest that the clubs would be getting that money. Certainly they'd be getting the money mentioned here. Well, we're facing a situation there that the top or top three teams in each division is going to be far wealthier with way better infrastructure than the other ones in their domestic competition, weakening 
their domestic leagues. So there's actually a counterpoint that if you give, you know, let's say you get to the final, it's going to be uh, very quick maths, three million, six, seven million for getting to the final and winning it. And I can guarantee that there are other gun clubs in those countries that do not have anywhere near that amount of money coming in. Here it states that there's already a significant financial dispute between teams in places like Tunisia, Morocco, Egypt and South Africa. And that will be worsened by this whole situation and money grab opportunity. And I suppose this statement here is one that is worth mentioning. The fact that some people have said that the um, the African Champions League or the African region of, of FIFA is a bit safer to play around with and experiment on. They certainly wouldn't be able to do something like this in Europe or South America, for example. There would be a much larger backlash if you touch the Champions League or the Copa Libertadores. So it is comparably safer to try out a couple of things in this region and see what works. And if it doesn't work, then, you know, forget about it, despite the harm that it will inevitably do in the region to those leagues. So there's a danger there that they haven't thought about every avenue. But, um, yeah, we'll go back to the matches. Hang on. So before we finish, and I'd like to hear your thoughts on the things that I just said. These were the quarterfinals. Bearing in mind there was no, there were no group games beforehand. I actually watched a bit of um, that match. It was very entertaining. I've got to be honest with you. Mamelodi Sundowns from South Africa against Petro Atletico um, of Angola. Then we had Simba um, Sporting Club against Al Ahly. Don't actually know where Simba are from. Are they Tanzania? Oh, Tanzania were in it. Sorry, my mistake. Al Ahly, of course, one of the best clubs in the world, I'd say. They're from Egypt. And then we had Enyimba from Nigeria, I believe. Just double check. Yeah, Nigeria. Against Wadad Casablanca of Morocco. And lastly, we had TP Mazembe of DR Congo against Espérance of Tunisia. So, some absolutely excellent teams, but, you know, are the negative aspects outweighing the positive? I saw this match on um, Discovery Plus or um, the old BT Sports, so they are showing it. So, um, yeah, I think, I mean, I'm interested in any high level of football, to be honest with you. But is it too risky? Is it going to do more harm than good? 